Hello again, Doc Ron Bio here to discuss Restriction Enzyme Digest. We're going to consider a more advanced example here, that of the circularized plasmid. So it's going to be a loop of DNA and not a linearized piece of DNA as we've considered in previous examples. So just a quick reminder of what we're talking about here. I use a simple representation of double-stranded DNA, this uh, sort of single line loop. However, I want you to remember that what we're actually digesting with our restriction enzymes is in fact double-stranded DNA. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to give you a few examples here of restriction enzyme digest. Your job is to uh, basically come up with the number and size of the fragments that's going to be created with the digest using the plasmid map in every picture. So here's your plasmid map. Use this map in each picture considering the restriction enzyme that I give you for this particular digest. So here in example one, we're going to do a single restriction enzyme digest. The restriction enzyme that we're using is BAMH1. You can see here that there's only one restriction site for BAMH1. So what this example shows is that if you digest a circular plasmid that has one restriction site for an enzyme, essentially what you do is linearize. So our 12 kb plasmid here remains 12 kb, so you'd get a single fragment of 12 kb in length. Okay, so you're just linearizing the plasmid here since there are no additional sites and no additional fragments will be generated. Let's go to a more complicated example. Here we're going to do a double digest uh, using the restriction enzymes PST3 and BAMH1 in this double digest. So you can see PST3 here and you can see BAMH1 here. Uh, my approach to this, to figure out these fragments, um, essentially you have to decide, you know, because we're dealing with a 12 kb fragment and you have four quadrants, each quadrant here is going to be worth 3 kb. Okay, and so because this PST3 site is essentially cutting this 3 kb uh, quadrant in half, you're going to get a 1.5 kb fragment here and 1.5 kb fragment here, but you have to consider the other uh, restriction enzyme sites that you're considering, right? So uh, basically we're going to digest with PST3 and BAMH1, so that's going to be one fragment. If you consider that, it's 3 plus 1.5 for a 4.5 kb fragment. You're also going to get another larger fragment, that being the BAMH1, all the way back around to this PST3. So by my math, you get 3 kb here, 3 kb here, 1.5 here, for a total of 7.5 kb. Now let's depict that on our map here. So for the 7.5 kb, you're going to get a fragment basically of that size, and then for the additional 4.5 kb, you're going to get a fragment of that size. So there's your one fragment, there's your second fragment. Uh, to check your answer, make sure all fragments add up to the total plasmid size. So here we have two fragments, one is 4.5 kb, the other is 7.5. So the math seems to add up for us getting to 12, point, uh, 12, 12 kb. Let's consider another example. In this example, we're doing a double digest with BAMH1 and XHO1. Which, uh, which are both on opposing sides of this 12 kb plasmid. So here you have your XHO1, here you have your BAMH1. Uh, because of this, we're going to generate two fragments of equal size, which is half the plasmid or 6 kb. So this fragment here would be 6 kb. This fragment here would also be 6 kb. 6 plus 6 is 12, so we've accounted for all of our DNA. So there's a fragment and there's a fragment. So you get one fragment here, one fragment here with that. Okay, so the math checks out on that one as well. Lastly, let's consider another double digest um, using ECHOR1 and PST3. So here's your PST3 site. In this case, what's interesting is you have two ECHOR1 sites. So we're only doing a double digest, that's two restriction enzymes. Uh, but one of the restriction enzymes, ECHOR1, has two restriction sites. So in this example, you have three restriction sites. So it gets a little more interesting here. So in this example right here, you'd get a fragment right here. 
we've defined that as 1.5 kb, you would get a fragment here, which is half the plasmid, so that's 6 kb, and then you'd get the remaining fragment between the PST and echo R1, and if this is 3 kb for that quadrant, and this is 1.5, you would get 4.5 kb. Okay, so essentially you have 1.5 for one fragment, uh, you're going to get 4.5 for another fragment, that takes us up to 6, and then the third fragment is going to be 6 kb, so you get three fragments here. Okay, uh, so again that has to add up to 12 kb, which is the total size of the plasmid, so always check your math. Uh, and that's it for this video, so I hope that helps. Let me know what you think below, and we'll see you next time.